The Nigeria Centre for Disease Control, NCDC, on Wednesday recorded 284 new cases of COVID-19, bringing the total number of infections in the country to 6,677. Meanwhile, eight new patients have been confirmed dead to the virus in the country, bringing the total number of deaths to 200. The agency explains that most of the fatalities recorded from COVID-19 were cases with other underlying illnesses. The 284 new cases were reported from Lagos with 199, Rivers 26, Oyo 19, FCT and Bornu 8 each, Klatu has 7, Digawa 6, Kano 5, Abia 2, Ekiti, Delta, Kwara and Taraba have 1 each. The NCDC noted that no new state has reported a case in the last 24 hours. Joining us live is Dr. Abiye Kalaiwo. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Now, the cases... Much happy to be here. Pleasure to have you. The cases are increasing. The WHO says this may not end anytime soon. The Minister of Health in Nigeria says we should prepare for worst days ahead. Where does this leave us? Uh, thank you very much for having me once again. Um, I can say uh, uh, um, uh, to a very large extent that's true. Um, I don't see you know, this going away soon. Uh, the number of cases we report on the average is on, on a daily basis is still climbing, meaning that we are still on the upside of the epidemic curve. Um, um, I say that uh, things might probably get a little bit worse before it gets any calls for, um, you know, Nigerians to really take responsibility and, you know, uh, help to slow the tide. Really, the power to slow the tide lies with Nigerians and some more. All right. Should we begin to explore measures on how to cope with COVID-19 indefinitely? And if so, what options should we be considering very seriously at this point? Um, the interesting thing is that um, some of the things that we need to do are actually very doable things. Uh, we need to uh, take very seriously the issue of physical distancing. Um, now that we're having significant cases of um, community transmission, people need to wear their masks because we don't know who is positive and um, who, who is shed virus. So people need to wear their masks um, as, a, as a means of protecting us. Um, we also need to um, really hope and pray that there's a, a thing soon so that um, people can begin to build immunity. But bottom line, um, we need to make sure that um, as much as possible, we do not um, allow stigma, discrimination, you know, to come in. If you look at other epidemics that have been managed um, in times past, HIV and all that, you notice that the big challenge to the response at some point was stigma and discrimination. And so, uh, so um, I, I would strongly recommend that whatever the health authorities, the NCDC is doing, um, they need to address um, issues around stigma and discrimination. And unfortunately, um, we're beginning to see some of that. And uh, we just pray that um, it doesn't get um, worse. Um, I, I always ask this question in the hopes that uh, some suggestion will come out that is strong enough to persuade us all. There is a, a very apparent disregard for the government's and health authorities' instruction on social distancing. Uh, we also know that the use of face mask is not strictly adhered to. Uh, yes, there are instances where we see people use hand sanitizers and wash their hands, but the issue of social distancing and the appropriate use of face mask continue to pose a challenge. What other way, aside from appealing to people's consciences, can the government and health authorities ensure enforcement of these others? Yeah, I think that's a very good question. Um, so the first thing to say is, is that um, we all need to realize that we are all in this, this, and if we want this to go away anytime soon, 
then we need to do the proper things. We need to do uh, physical distancing and social connectedness. I know that um, the word social thing is really out there, but it's actually physical distancing, maintaining um, at least two meters, you know, um, distance from from any other person wearing your face mask. And um, uh, we also need to just basically continue to, um, you know, encourage people to do these things. Enforcement comes with its own burden. You don't want to create a secondary problem by trying to solve a time primary one. I think um, it still goes, I think personally, I don't think that we are doing enough for public education. I think we need to do a lot more social and behavior change communication. Government needs to invest in that and, um, you know, so that people, people can understand that they need to do certain things. When you begin to go around enforcement, I mean, we all know um, how enforcement of things can be here in, here in this country. Um, we begin to introduce, you know, second, second issues. People look away around this thing they, because they really don't understand and they feel like the government thing. So they, so they look around the things and, and at the end of the day, they still don't invite anyone. We need to take the messages down to the areas in such a way that it evokes a change in behavior. People wear their masks. People maintain, maintain physical and um, you know, people wash their hands, people use hand sanitizers as well as possible. I mean, those are the basics. All right, let's take a look at the easing of the lockdown, especially in light of the increasing figures we have on a daily basis. States have taken it a step further. Some of them are gradually opening up worship centers. You know, this has been an issue of debate for a while. My question is, is it time enough to begin to allow for such moves? So there's a delicate balance between enforcing a lockdown and providing the necessary creative for you know people to be able to stay um, in their houses. And from the look of things, um, the palliative bit has not been very, very, very strong or effective. And so there's a need to begin to open up um, you know places where people have you know gatherings. But I say that um, you know. You know, uh, the, the government has to ensure that there are very strict guidelines around how these places are open. I mean, it's not like, like you know, virus lives in those places. It moves from humans to humans. And if we're able to have a situation where um, people maintain the proper, dis people maintain the proper personal and environmental hygiene, then, you know, really, uh, there shouldn't be uh, so many issues. The problem usually uh, would be the ability of people to abide by the guidelines of, you know, um, being in those places, going to, going to the market for us. I mean, we, we, just, we just need to make sure that people abide by the guidelines if we're going to open up, um, you know, the society and, and the economy. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Doctor, for joining us. Thank you. Happy to be here. Do stay safe.